Awesome. Welcome everyone. This is another fun session with deep learning adventures and fun engaging community with members around the country and around the world. I'm George, I'm joined by, by my great friends and colleagues, Alana, David, Robert, as well as friends from all around the country today. Welcome everyone, good to see you. If you're joining us from YouTube, it's always a pleasure um, interacting with you through the comments and yeah, feel free to chime in. Let me share my screen real quick. Uh, okay. So last time we talked a little bit about the uh, one specific resource that we use for this certification, this Amazon Web Services certification called Cloud Practitioner. This is the entry level certification. Um, it's right here. And we're using that as a gateway to more advanced certification. Specifically, we're interested in this machine learning specialty ones. Um, this data analytics is also interesting, but uh, coming from a machine learning, deep learning background as a community, we're going to tackle this, this one first or second. Um, for those of you who have hands-on experience with uh, Amazon Web Services, you might recognize some of the other uh, branches here, or if you're, if you're brand new, um, Amazon Web Services is using these three branches, the architect side, where you're more on the design and research phase, the operations where you actually have hands-on to maintain systems in production, and the developer, we actually build things from scratch. There's something called DevOps, which is between developer and operations. Then the specialty ones, uh, pay attention to like security, databases, advanced networking, data analytics is more for like uh, big data and um, ETL kind of workloads, as well as machine learning, which we're going to tackle next. So yeah, yesterday we talked about a very specific resource, and today we're going to talk about the exam experience itself, as well as how Robert, Alana, and I uh, practice for it and pass the exam. So I'll be using this. Um, presentation, which is also on the, on the meetup. And on the meetup also, I have so this is the link for the presentation, a link for the Amazon Web Service Certification page, as well as our brand new playlist. So if you click on this link, you'll see our first video that we did last time. And I'll upload today's session uh, sometime tomorrow. Cool. Uh, we also have a Slack channel. Uh, Feel free to join us there, as well as a larger YouTube uh, channel where you can find all our recorded videos. All right, let's dive right in. Uh, let me present. So, can you see my screen? Perfect. So yeah, a uh, quick overview. Um, this is the layout of the specialization, and we're going to talk about the cloud practitioner here, specifically the exam experience, as well as tips and tricks. How to pass it. So a little bit of an overview of the exam. Um, the level is foundational. You, um, I think, in the website of Amazon Web Services, mentioned anywhere from is it three to six months, or maybe at least six months of experience with Amazon Web Services. But it is basically entry level uh, certification. So even if you don't have any knowledge or any pre previous experience with Amazon Web Services you're highly encouraged to, to check it out. Uh, the exam itself is about 90 minutes, even though I don't think you're gonna need 90 minutes. Um, it costs uh, $100. Um, I looked online for vouchers or coupons. I couldn't find any. So unfortunately we have to pay that month. <laughs> and uh, the format is you have 65 questions and it's other multiple, uh, you either select one out of four choices. It's always four choices or you select multiple out of four choices. Were there more than four choices? I don't remember. Do you remember, Alana or Robert? No, it was always either one or two out of four. Yeah, one or two. Well, it was always either one out of four or two out of five. I, I believe. Two out of five, okay. Oh. All right. And well, one other point about the cost, I'll note that um, if yeah. you're currently employed, many, many employers will have various plans for, for covering that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you book it as well, but it's very flexible. It's online and you have two options or two um, certification companies, uh, Pearson and uh, uh, PSI. Uh, both of them have uh, in person as well as online. We all choose online for uh, practical reasons and obvious reasons. And 
yeah, that would uh, work out well. So yeah. Uh, anything else about this exam overview you want to share, Robert, or online? At a high level. I will note that I had far, maybe exposure to the cloud I did have, but, uh, but I feel like I have certainly had six months or less than six months of expertise with the cloud for sure. Uh, I was learning about most of the services for the first time, but it really only requires a high level understanding of why you use the services mm -hmm. in order to pass an exam like this one. Cool. Yeah. Alana, did you take yours online? Yeah. Okay, so all three of you took the online version. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I have um, like also minimal experience with Amazon, basically no high level experience, but experience actually like spinning up instances, you know, like so a little bit like so I've seen compute, I've seen some of the terms, but I never really had the time to get into what they meant. So that really helped with some of those things that I that like the things that I had used before, they made a lot of sense to me, like understanding what they were actually doing. But uh, yeah, I was com like completely new to all of it beyond that. I, and myself, I had a lot of experience with Google Cloud actually, platform GCP. And uh, it was funny because many years ago when I, or a so, few years ago when I jumped to AWS as well, there was a translation table that I was using to compare. Well, this is a service that's called this on GCP. This is how it's called on AWS. But yeah, if you're familiar with Azure or GCP or other vendors, there's usually a pretty good correlation in terms of services that they use. There are some services that are unique in each cloud provider, but for the most part of it, you know, storage, compute, networking, um, security, and all that are, are pretty well defined uh, services. Cool. Uh, right. So let's jump a little bit on the actual uh, resources that we use. So we covered the first one last time. This is the actual content <laughs> we highly encourage you to, to prepare for. And um, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the exam guide as well as some other practice questions and digital training. So let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so exam guide. So the exam guide covers a little bit about the different topics that you'll be asked. Um, I liked, yeah, it covers the format, as we mentioned, multiple choice, multiple uh, responses. Uh, out of 65 questions, uh, only you'll be scored on 50 of them. There are 15 questions that are there just for um, a B testing for, for Amazon Web Services to to figure out, okay, is this a good question for uh, for our users for next time or not? And you don't know which which of those 15 questions will be unscored. Uh, the scale is anywhere between 100 and 1,000, and the minimum passing score is 700. You don't get a score, though, uh, in the end of passing. You just get a breakdown. Well, once you, once you do the exam online, you just get a pass or fail. You don't get a score. And then a few days later on the actual uh, certification portal, which you have an account with, you'll see a breakdown into the different uh, categories. And the categories are this, domain one, cloud concept, number two, security compliance, three, technology, and four, billing and pricing. And this percentage here is just an average of the questions that will be asked for each domain. So to, to go back to the score breakdown, you had to ask for that link specifically, or is that something that any of us can go look? I'll for? show you. On, yeah, I'll show you my website. It's actually there. I didn't. I didn't notice it though. But I reached out to Amazon Web Services certification, and they guided me where to find this and other resources that I'll share in the end. Yeah, we were we were a little bit confused by I think in the in the exam itself the portal said something about we would be getting this breakdown five days later and I, I don't think we actually got it i think you had to go log in to get it yeah yeah i was expecting an email i didn't get an email i reached out to support and yeah they guided me where to find that breakdown but again there's no breakdown in terms of you got five out of 20 questions or 15 out of 20 questions right it's just a pass or fail oh it's just pass fail for each section individually for each domain, yeah. 
fortunate or unfortunate. Now, now they do say that the overall exam pass or fail is is uh, in is a is an addition of those, right? So one could theoretically fail one or two of those sections and still pass the exam if if your right. scores are sufficiently high. It's really just a number of questions you get right on the whole exam that matters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you didn't really do well in the billing and pricing, yeah, but hopefully you did well in all three, you're in that 84%, yeah, so probably you could pass it. Cool, then I'm not gonna go into detail, but yeah, it's domain here in the exam guide, there's a, a, a nice breakdown of the different services you'll be asked, same for security compliance, uh, mentioning several services here, um, we covered many of them, uh, not all of them, but we covered many of them in the previous session. So I highly encourage you to check out that recording. Um, same for tech. Uh, you have a lot of services here. Uh, and then billing and pricing, uh, course explorer and so forth. Um, there, is, um, there is a breakdown here in the end that I did not fully pay attention to. So specifically, uh, it's broken down by domains. I don't think the training material used any of all of them. Uh, that's why when we were asked some questions, we're going to share with you some of those. Uh, some of those questions came from here, but they were not mentioned in the training material that we covered last week. So uh, we encourage you to check out this, this exam guide here as well and learn a little bit about each of these services. There's a good chance you'll be asked. Is it possible that those are the questions that are experimental and don't count toward your actual score? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. For, for example, like developer tools are not mentioned at all in the uh, training material that we covered, but all of us were asked questions about developer tools. <laughs> hmm. I yeah. I think that, that would be, it would be nice if that was the case, but like George just mentioned, there I think that there, there were so many developer tools questions asked that that's yeah. more than 15 out of 50. You know, I, mm. I, I was feeling like the experimental ones were, were possible. Well, I was hoping that they were some of the ones where there was like a service that was mentioned, like a more kind of niche service that was mentioned here, like, you know, Kinesis or Macy or something like that. Um, but I think that the, the developer tools are probably pretty necessary to know those. We certainly don't have enough information to be able to contradict that hypothesis. <laughs> right, that's okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, we, in, the, in summary, we, we highly encourage you to check out these services and learn at least, at least something about each one of them. Cool. Um, let me go back to my presentation. So that was the exam guide. Um, there's something called, um, did we cover this digital training? Is this the, let me open this. Is that the link to the course we discussed last week? Oh, this is the course. Yeah, I apologize. This is the course. Um, I don't know why I have it. Got it. Uh, sample questions. I highly encourage you to check out the sample questions just to get an idea of the questions you'll be asked during the exam. And so, yeah, which is why is AWS more economical than traditional data centers? Um, you can monthly basis, that's incorrect. You build an actual on a second basis. Uh, users retain full access to their EC2. Not really. There are um things that you cannot do to your ec2 that especially with related hardware and firmware um ec2 can be launched on demand when needed yes that is correct and you can permanently run enough instances to handle big workloads mm, no that's not economical that you'll be out of your budget if you do that so yeah this is on demand when needed uh it makes more sense uh for this for this question and this, if you go through them, there's like- that, that is a great illustration of the general approach to answer any question on this exam, is just consider each of, this, each of the answers in turn, like yes, no, 
and then and then at the end select you know which one you thought was the most likely right sometimes you're going to get some where you're not really sure about but sometimes then you'll find one that's a little bit clearer further down in the list you always want to make sure you read all the answers and that you read them very carefully because mm -hmm. sometimes the reading comprehension itself makes the big difference between whether you get the question correct or not. Absolutely. That also comes into play in the last few modules of the training material, especially when we talked about cloud adoption framework, the CAF, as well as the uh, well-architected framework. Like the wording was so specific that you had to pay a lot of attention. They give usually you when you have time for the exam, right? 90 minutes to do 65 multiple choice questions. So highly advise reading very carefully. Just yeah. make sure you understand what they're asking. Right. And usually when you read them, some of them are obviously very wrong. You'll be like, heck no. Some of them are maybe, and some and one of them will hopefully say yes. And that's the right answer. But for those who maybe you are between two of them, maybe, maybe. During the exam, you have the option to flag that question and you can review it later. So these sample questions have the sample answers as well and a short description of why uh, you know, that is the right answer. So that was a good, um, a good practice set. Uh, what other resource do we have here? Uh, there's something called official practice question set. And for that, you need actually a separate account. Um, and you are timed and you actually get to see a breakdown of your score um, as you do it. So we highly encourage you to check out that as well. That was useful for me, uh, this bench prep resource. Um, and there's also something called uh, a webinar that basically gives you an overview of the exam itself and what to expect. Uh, let me just, yeah. So this practice one in English, what is English? Is the webinar on demand? Yeah, the webinar is on demand, yeah. Okay. Uh, it actually, it is, on, is it on demand or is it? I think it's happening every week, but it ha it's happening on different time zones. Oh yeah, it looks like it's got a ah. date and a time. It yeah. says on demand yeah. for the second one. Oh, the second oh one? Yeah. yeah, this one. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. there are both options, but I didn't. Both I didn't do yeah. that in the end. Yeah, you just register for it. Yeah, and that just gives you an overview of, of the exam itself. Um, but going back to this practice question, I like it because you also get a practice one for all the space all the specialization not just this one uh, so if you see you get questions for the cloud practitioner but as well as for the machine learning which we're interested in next so you get actually 10 or 20 questions for yeah 20 questions for each of them so it's a great resource um, cool that's the webinar uh, training that's the main website for the cloud practitioner exam guide. Um, there was uh, that, uh, you know, you had the sample questions. Where is that? Um, so if you go, um, it seemed like there was a 90% score. Oh, for the, got it, got it. So you're saying about the, the third party, this one, right? Yeah, this one, where is it? So this one is, sorry, it's called official practice question sets. You have to find it in AWS training and certification. Here, I'll post the oh. link in the chat. Okay. Yeah, uh, but that one comes with way more you just need the first one. That was this one, yep. And the webinar that we just covered. Cool. Uh, anything else before we switch? We wanna talk a little bit about the exam experience and some content that we found interesting. Uh, anything else related to links and resources, Robert or Roland? 
Anything else I used apart from this? Uh, one thing that you pointed me to that I found really helpful was uh, some independent YouTube video with uh, someone who had created questions uh, attempting to emulate those you might find on the exam. They weren't actual right. exam questions, but just somebody trying to... Uh, and was it that link down there? Yeah, yeah, I have it here, yeah. I think it's called Cloud or something like that. It's a, a third, yeah, it's a person like us or a community like us that went through questions like this. Yeah, those were super helpful because it was a much wider variety of questions and you could look at the question, pause the video, think about it a bit, and then often he would come back with explanations for for why yeah. an answer was correct or not. And I found that uh, as I progressed through those videos, because he has a playlist and there's, I think there's about 10 videos, mm -hmm. um, I started to think a little bit more, I, I think I learned a little bit more about the format and structure of the questions themselves. Like I, I missed a few of the early questions on his videos, not really mm -hmm. thinking them fully through. So I think that they help give me an appreciation for the correct difficulty level of the exam, which was much, which is more challenging than the than the questions that are offered at the end of that essentials training course, which are a little bit uh, a little bit too easy and not representative of the exam itself. Good point. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. The the questions that were asked here in the end compared to the actual exam were a little bit easier. So yeah, it's, it's good to get as many practice questions as possible, or maybe third party questions. But I thought that third party course. video was about the right, the right level of difficulty. So if you're getting 75% or so of those questions correct, that's, that's probably a good barometer. Let me move this to links and resources then since it's so useful. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I, I felt like that was the best resource that I used to prepare for the exam. Um, and like when I started watching those, like I felt like I was maybe ready to take the exam. And then when I started going through those videos at the very beginning, I thought, oh, I, I am not ready at all because um, because the material is so high level, the the training that we covered like last week. And so not just like introducing some of those developer tools, which he did also like among others, but he also talked through that thought process of like the benefits of AWS, because I'm the kind of person that when I take a multiple choice, I always, like, I can discard two, but then there's two left over. I, I'm never sh completely, hardly ever sure of a completely correct answer. And so with the benefits, it's, I think it's really easy to get, um, to talk yourself into understanding that, that that a couple of them can be correct. And he really helped me specifically with this, understand like the differences between those like core ideals of AWS and how these questions were gonna be asked. And that I'm, I'm like very confident to say that like, I don't think I would have passed it if I hadn't have watched those videos, unless I had spent more time studying, you know. Yeah, I would say I had a similar experience. I thought I was ready, started looking at those, and was like, wait a minute, <laughs> these questions are quite a bit harder, and they require a little bit more thought. And so I took the extra time, extra day, I guess, before actually taking the exam, after going through a lot of those videos. It's super helpful. So at the end of the uh, essential digital training, there were three links they, they advised checking out. One was the... Um, it's like an 85 page overview of all the Amazon web services. There was one white paper on how pricing works. And then one was a link to support plans. Did you guys use any of those? Uh, the 85 page white paper on all the services was a really good overview just to, okay. to learn. Because when you go through the training, you're not going to be exposed to all the names that could appear on the exam, but just right. going through it quickly and saying, okay, this service is this, right? Like I think I was asked about Amazon workspaces, something about that. I don't remember what the question was, but I think I got it correct and would not have gotten it correct if I hadn't just you know, spent 
10 seconds looking at it as I pr browsed down through that document along with the hundred other services that I didn't know. Yeah, and I and I used uh, kind of like similar to that. I also used that document that George showed a little bit earlier that had it was just like that eight or nine page breakdown where it lists all, all the services, although it's not all of them, to just kind of remind myself like, what are the names? What are they related to? That kind of thing. And I think that that helped me a lot too. So I think any thing listed at the end of this or any service listed in this white paper could appear on the exam. Certainly those that are in the essentials training course are more core and more important, but just having some clue of what the rest of those services do, even if you only remember <laughs> half of them by the time you get to the exam, maybe that's a couple more questions you can get that you, than you otherwise would have. Yeah, this 85 page. <laughs> I mean, I spent maybe two hours just browsing through this document. I'll be, no, I'll be honest with you. I didn't read all of it. I skimmed through it, but there's a lot of services here that like were, uh, okay, good to know, but I'm probably never going to use it. So I quickly skimmed through them. Um, Where is the, can you, can you put the URL of this document? Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Also in the essential training, the digital training, it's at the end of that. Yeah. It's part of the digital. Okay. Um, yeah, like some of that stuff in there is just, I mean, media services. They've got lots of different services, all with the word media in the name. Sometimes it's kind of obvious from the name, but in many cases it's not right. if you haven't heard of it. Yeah. So a quick Athena's description. It's kind of an important BI. Uh, query yeah. tool that uh, isn't covered in the essentials course at all. Right. The how pricing works is now archived, <laughs> but uh, I have the link to the newer one there oh, at did? the very top. Yeah. I, at the very top. The, very t the first page just. Okay. See that? Yeah. Just click on that. That's newer. Okay. So it's like <clears throat> principles. Yeah, I don't know. I think the uh, the training essentials uh, did a good job on pricing. I mean, it didn't go to all the details, but yeah, I, like I, I don't remember ask, being asked a question about pricing that was not able to answer just from the training essentials. I would I would agree with that. This uh, encyclopedia here, yeah, please. I don't know what to recommend. Uh, you don't you don't want to get too lost or too. Uh, overwhelmed at the same time. So use it with caution and uh, like ARVR, you're not going to be asked any question about that. Um, yeah, I was just kind of browsing through it to get familiar with the ones that I had never heard of just to, you know, like almost a key value thing, like, okay, chime, what's that? <laughs> it's a five word description of what it is right. for. This support plan though, and this table was useful, yeah, because you might you'll be asked questions in terms of maybe SLA, like how long do you expect an answer or uh, what is the right amount of plan that you have was a trust advisor with all the whistles and bells and that's the enterprise one so um, this was a good one yeah I actually recommend learning pretty much everything in this chart right here because they will ask detailed questions about it and that's, that's right. highlighted in the essentials course as well they spend a full module just talking about the differences between these plans mm -hmm. yeah like i spent time studying it and then i was asked like the the one thing like i felt like the one thing that i didn't know about it so that was fun cool cool let's switch gears a bit thank you friends this was fun let's switch gears a little bit to talk about the experience itself so um first of all when you book it online um you have the option, they're very flexible. You have the option, in my case, to book it like 30 minutes before. So uh, on their website, they're saying, I don't know if they say 24 seven, but uh, some of us could not book it on the same day, maybe the next day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was very flexible. Like, uh, what did you think, Robert and Alana, in terms of just booking the uh, exam? I managed to book it just 10 minutes out from when I logged in, <laughs> kind of rushed <laughs> to get going. Yeah. Right, so cool. 
I was on the, I was on the far end. I really wanted to take it. And then I couldn't, I had an, an evening and I couldn't book it for the whole rest of that day. And so then mm -hmm. I, I tried the next day cause I didn't know when I was going to be available the next day and I couldn't do it that whole next day either. So then I just booked it for first thing in the morning, the next day. Cause then I was starting to get frustrated. Like, I just want to take it cause right. you know, I don't want to lose the information in my mind and I'm, you know, like I'm still studying, but it's just, I find this stuff, this kind of stuff very stressful. So I just wanted to get it over with at that point. Um, and so I had to do it the day before to be sure that I could take it. So I would recommend if you know, just get in there and do it the next day, unless you have like a lot of time, flexible time after that. Yeah, absolutely agree. I spent a day or two reviewing the essentials one more time, sample questions one more time, maybe that YouTube video one more time, a playlist. And then just do it because that's the optimal time to take it when you have all this knowledge in your mind. Your time, like, can it be any time, any day, or weekends different than weekdays? What's is there any flex? Did you notice anything there? Yeah, it was like in fifteen minute chunks when I saw yeah. it, and then there was like an occasional hour that wasn't available, but it didn't yeah. seem to have any kind of um, like rhyme or reason to that. Every um, day of the week. Yeah. So even even all night long. Yeah. Did there any anywhere in the world yeah because they serve people from all around the country yeah, so they have people in different time zones yeah so if you yeah. want to take it at 2 a.m go for it i don't recommend it <laughs> i was like really close to doing the midnight because i was like so annoyed that i couldn't do it that day and i thought no like don't like you want to be no. do it a bit of fresh mind uh, i would say not early in the morning when you wake up no maybe noon afternoon i would say i don't know again you know best but knowing that how your mind works. I, I practice two to three hours before I take it. Cool. Uh, then the other thing that is was interesting, you actually paired with somebody, I don't know what's the title, administrator, I guess, uh, but somebody's actually supervising your exam. So you don't get to see them, they get to see you, they get to hear you. And as part of the checking process, uh, we, we can only encourage you to have your phone with you. And most important, uh, clear your desk. So there should be nothing on your desk, maybe a bottle of water, but that's it. That was very critical. Um, and you have to prove that your desk is clean, right? So you have to take photos with your phone of your desk, behind your desk, on your left, on your right, and upload them on the website. You also you know, take photos how flexible of your... are they? Are they talking about like books and paper and stuff? I mean, what if you have other equipment? Nothing, it should be empty. <laughs> Really, like radio or like another monitor? Yep. Yeah, they need to make sure that you don't have anything within arm's reach that you could possibly use to help you with the exam. So no electronics, no notebooks, no written materials, no, he, no pen. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually wearing a uh, baseball cap at the time and was... Uh, was first of all very politely asked if I was wearing the headwear for religious reasons. And when I said no, um, he asked me to discard that as well. Interesting. Okay. Did, did they give you some kind of uh, document that tells you all this or they just do it on when you're, I mean, when you sign up, do they tell you all this or somewhere? Or how, do you, how do you know at the time? That's a good question. No, uh, any of the materials I read, the webinar didn't say this. No, I was, I was, I was reacting to the environment, <laughs> which was stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other thing is that uh, they're going to ask. Well, they certainly asked me to pan around the room with. I mean, taking photos with either the phone or the laptop, but then they also had me verify. Um, that the phone was inaccessible during the exam as well. Right. Um, so what I actually did, and that had to be on camera as well. So I think I did it right here in the same location where you see me now. And I, I just, uh, I opened the door and put the phone back there and, uh, and then basically told the proctor that, well, I'm going to put the phone back there and you're not going to see me disappear off the screen for the entire time of the exam. So you know I'm here and you know my phone's back there. And that's it. Right. 
Carolina? Since I signed up for it um, the day before, there was kind of this like pre sign in process that I did, uh, which included, you know, taking photos of like where I was going to take it. And um, and I thought that that would streamline. They, they say you have to like sign up or they recommend that you sign up a half hour before the test. And mm -hmm. um, and I thought that because I did all this pre stuff, that would be faster. But it still took the full half hour to run through it all again. And then, uh, and I, uh, so I, I was getting like a little bit nervous. I thought like, well, I'm, this is going to take longer because I have to wait for someone to respond and I need mm -hmm. to make sure that my pictures go through and close, you know, close Chrome. And, um, and actually for me too, when I like, cause I'm on a laptop, as soon as my, as soon as I started the exam, this little badge came across that said I needed to update my computer, but then I couldn't, cause of the, the running of the application, I couldn't like discard it. And I couldn't, like, I couldn't like read the question cause it was like covering the question. And so then I had to contact the person. I said, Hey, um, I need to stop and start again. So I can like move this badge. Cause the, the app was like taking up all of like my computer, like it wasn't allowing me to do anything else besides take the test. And so I did that and then I moved it and then I had to go, kind of like go through the process again to log back on to continue the exam. And that was right. like kind of frustrating, but it was fine. It was worth it to read the questions, you know. Wow, I'm sorry, I didn't know you went through that. Uh, so yeah, very clean desk, nothing, just water. And I take a bio break before the exam you're not allowed to leave your your desk if you leave your desk your exam is cancelled and you don't get your money back so and your phone should be not reachable like you had to hide it i had to put it somewhere over there i was asked do you have a mirror and they might they might ask you to get a mirror if you have one to sh look around i was like i don't have a mirror <laughs> with me portable i went in another room yeah i mean i was asked to just pan the the webcam all over the place right like you're looking at me right now you can't see that I have this notebook right down here on the desk. Right, right, right. Uh, so they, yeah, they had they had you pan all around, verify that there's nothing that you can reach, and then once they've checked all that off, right. you have to stay in the same place. I have a, a, a iMac, just like a, a screen with a computer in it, and it's not easy for me to move it. I told them that, so that's why they asked me, okay, take your phone and take a bunch of photos. So that's what I did. Great, great question here in the chat. Um, I, I I have to say that I did not did not have the temptation to uh, to do that. Okay. Um, Please don't wait to close. All right. <laughs> uh, photos of bottle, your IT. As long as the bottle doesn't have a label on it, I think you're fine. <laughs> I well, I mean, I was it. checked. They, they, they wanted to make sure that there was nothing around. So right. I, I think they would have detected the existence of a bottle um, before the exam and whether that I would mean, have been okay. Think of it as like you're entering a bottle like a, okay, then an empty bottle probably is too. Yeah. It's like a security check, you know, like airport or if you don't work with like government, like it's, I haven't done work for the government, so I don't know how it is, but it's like a security check. -in. So yeah photos of your id you're supposed to take a self as well make sure you're the right person and you're not taking the exam for somebody else make sure your computer your um you don't have your computer and your water bottle nothing else one thing that threw me off well oh then let's talk about the actual app the actual app only runs uh, runs on your computer and it's the only one that should be open it will actually ask you to close all your other apps so any other app whatever it is should not be running on your computer only that app it won't run if it detects anything else running. You have right. to close Safari. Number one. Run. Number two, what threw me off, I have a 27 inch screen. That app opens up in full screen and cannot be customized the size of it. So it's for me, it was gigantic. <laughs> and the timing was here. Uh, the question was here. Uh, something else was down here, and the next button was here. So I had something on all four corners and I had to go like this every time I read a question which was very annoying and very weird experience <laughs> while being supervised by the proctor go ahead Mike what if you have a dual monitor I have two 28 inch monitors yeah they don't allow you to be near a second monitor at least that's what I understood 
Oh, yeah, they're I probably going to ask you to remove it or something, right? You should only have one monitor, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, I oh, think one they thing that I probably they want with the camera, so just like a laptop has the camera, right. so, so that's what they yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. If they see a photo, they have two monitors. They're probably going to ask you to remove one monitor. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did while reading the exam, I was thinking out loud. I do that on my own. Like when I read a question, you know, I talk to myself. Like that's how I can think better. I did that in the first few questions. And then I got this weird message from the proctor. Please stop mumbling or speaking to yourself or your exam will be canceled. Like what the heck? Where did this come from? I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was not allowed to speak to myself. It's just me here. <laughs> and then I was under a little bit stressed situation because I wanted to speak up but I was not allowed to <laughs> for the rest of the exam but yeah don't don't speak up <laughs> unfortunately I, I guess they think it's possible you could be communicating with someone else somehow through doing that and right I don't know I George was the first one to take the exam and warned the others of us or else I probably would have gotten the same message because yeah. I find speaking out loud especially when one is attempting uh, careful reading comprehension would be the easiest way of achieving that. So instead, I pro I think I just sat, st stood here mouthing the words slowly for every question. Uh, did not get any feedback from the proctor on that, but I did not say them out loud. They're probably also concerned that you have a recording device and you'll share all the questions with other future test takers. Yeah, it's a good point. I hadn't thought Which about is that. possible. Yeah, pretty pretty famous right. in uh, the tech world, especially IT companies, for them to right. record all the questions after an exam and pass it on to their other employees. That's a that's a very. I mean, I will I will name names, but that's very standard in some companies. Sure, I don't I don't mind all this, but at least there should be a resource in the Amazon Web Services prep list that should tell you all about this. All about the process, all about the desk, all about the you're not allowed to leave, you're not allowed to talk, you're not allowed to <laughs> do anything. Like it yeah. should be specifically mentioned that you're at least psychologically prepared. Not like you go there and you face all this and like, what the heck am I doing? It could be that they use outside proctoring companies and they, they all may have different approaches. So maybe they they can't share because they don't know what's gonna what you're gonna be put, you know, what your situation will uh, be. I don't know. I shouldn't make excuses for them. Just you know, it's because they should have their own their own standards. Yeah, it could be, but they should know what's the exam experience, right? Yeah. Feedback. They wanted feedback. They said they wanted feedback. So there you go. I'll give them feedback. Don't worry. <laughs> when I'm happy, you know it. When I'm when I'm unhappy, you know it too. So <laughs> I felt like my freedom was being threatened there, but I was like, okay, let's go with this. <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of time, 90 minutes, is it? Uh, it didn't take me that long. It took me 30 minutes to answer all of them, including tagging the, tr the difficult ones. And then I reviewed the difficult ones for like 10, 15 more minutes. So about 45 minutes. It took me and then, you know, about half the time. And then half the time I was like, okay, I'm pretty confident. It, Let's just take it. There's an interesting um, comment by G in the chat. He says, yeah. don't run a VPN with a different IP. I wonder, if, could you elaborate on that for us a little bit? Why that might be a problem? Uh, do you, do you, G, do you mean during the test or are you talking about when you're, you're bookmarking those things that maybe you, depending on your IP, they might change? You don't want to be using old copy. All right, we'll, we'll see what he Oh, hmm. I, they, I don't they know how worry the you are getting someone in China taking your exam by proxy. Interesting comment, you know. I don't know how that'd be possible, right? I mean, the application is running on your computer. I don't know. I don't know how you can hack it. We're not giving any advice to that. Just take the exam. <laughs> well, well, they do for sure advise not taking it um on a corporate computer or something with a company firewall um vpns any any number of things that can complicate the service and can make the software yeah. not, not function 
so maybe the app that's running is doing some kind of like IP check or Mac check in the background to make sure that it's the same computer you're claiming to be. So, okay. We're not going to get into that, friend, but yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I will say that my own experience, I, I took probably twice as long as George and my first first to uh, go through the exam it took me maybe 55 minutes or something to go through all the all the questions very carefully um, but then I didn't flag anything I, I figured if I didn't know it the first time uh, I really wasn't didn't learn it during the exam I think I went back over a few but didn't change any answers yeah I was kind of in the middle of, of both of you and I flagged stuff and then I went back and didn't change much of what I flagged but I like when I reached a point where I thought like okay I'm not for some reason I can't focus on this question right now like maybe I'll get another one that'll kind of like jog something so I wanted to give myself a chance to pass back through so I flagged a lot and went went back and that just made me feel better although it didn't really change much of what I actually marked. Mm -hmm. The ones that I marked, some of them, I didn't know the answer and I was between two. So spending more time wouldn't help. Usually when I take this kind of exams, usually I go with a gut feeling. So usually your first answer is the right one from, this is just coming from personal experience. You never know though, sometimes you can, you can learn something just from the way one of the other questions is phrased, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. You might be asked the same questions, yeah, uh, later on and might be easier. Yeah, like the, the oh, so go ahead. Like the developer ones, yeah, I was asked a few of them. Uh, luckily, I was aware of them from like uh, attending some Amazon Web Services uh, conferences. So I was, I've heard of them, but I haven't used them, so I, I kind of knew my way. Sorry, Lana. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say like that. Yeah, like a further question could help inform like maybe what a service was, um, like what its uh, context was, or like maybe. If it was like all like a developer question and it was all with developer, you know, services, then that maybe could help inform something that you saw earlier. That's all. Cool. So that's the exam part. And that's the most stressful part, honestly. It's just checking in, taking photos, making sure everything is clear, your desk is clear, and using this full screen app. Uh, other than that, you just take the exam, click next, flag, and you know, you're good. Cool, I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about services that uh, we were asked. Uh, we can talk about this. We're not talking about questions, we're talking about services. We're allowed to talk about services. Um, so these are some services that might or might not have come on different exams, <laughs> let's be vague here, <laughs> that um, were not in the training material. And, but some of them or all of them or most of them were in the um, exam guide in this, uh, appendix here in the very end. Um, and they're know. all in that white paper too. Oh, uh, I hope they are because that's a 85 page paper. <laughs> so yeah, uh, code related, commit pipeline. Um, some of us were asked questions. Let's be very vague again. <laughs> this is recorded. <laughs> um, BBC Pink, yep. Uh, control tower, what in the world? I was not aware of control tower. Um, this way for you to manage multiple AWS accounts. App sync has nothing to do with app syncing. I think this is a queuing. Is it a queuing or GraphQL? Nothing to do with apps. Uh, it's just uh, API for interacting with graph services. Pinpoint, it's, I think, for interacting with uh, app notifications and SMS notifications. Light sale is for, interact, uh, for managing multiple EC2 instances. Um, a few VPC and, v and NAT gateway questions, as well as VPN questions. Uh, get private link. Uh, I don't remember specifically private link being mentioned in the training tutorial. I remember Direct Connect was in the training tutorial, but for me, Direct Connect was asked so many times. I was like, okay, I have to mention Direct Connect. <laughs> um, storage gateway as well was another question that we saw. EFS plans. Plans is in the training material. So uh, what was interesting about plans though was the question was a scenario based. So um, like in terms of SLA, 
as well as uh, yep, Alan, you mentioned Aurora, uh, Natgate or Robert, you mentioned. Uh, Amazon MQ just, Code Star and X Ray. Just for reference, I was looking up a few of those, like Pinpoint and uh, what was it? Some like Async. Those are not in the exam guide at all. Oh, yeah. They're not even that, that list, yeah. that appendix at the end. They're not there. So maybe they were distracted. That's what they called, you know, they're just there to distract you or. Experimental so they asked a good question, but one of the answers was probably this or this, just to distract you. Yeah, the word distractor is the word they're using to describe wrong answers for questions. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we encounter, encountered them on the exam, we don't necessarily know if they're right or wrong. Right. Uh, any other content that you came across that was not specifically or explicitly mentioned in the essential training? Uh, workspaces was the one I mentioned earlier. Just oh yeah, that's right. Workspaces. Okay, let me add it. Yeah, and I was asked a question about AWS Macy, M A C I E. I still haven't looked that up, so I don't know what that is. Okay, let's add it. Let's add both. Workspaces is for having your own virtual desktops. Okay. Uh, so Macy and workspaces are, are in the exam guide. Mm. In the appendix. Uh, Macy. But it's important to emphasize that everyone's exam experience is unique. This is just to provide an illustration that yes, any service is fair game to some extent. Yeah, and actually after George took the exam first and, and he mentioned all these things that weren't in the core material, that was the thing that actually really prompted me to start looking into other stuff. Cause I kind of thought, oh, well, you know, we've gone through the training, we're fine. Right. And I'm really glad I didn't try to take the test <laughs> after doing the AWS training modules only. It would have been horrible. Let's just say we overfit in the training set. So we, <laughs> we definitely did that. <laughs> we were confident we we're going to be asked only questions in the training, essential training, and not in the exam guide. Like, ah, it wasn't mentioned. So we're not, we don't need to pay. The course, the, the questions at the end of the essentials training were, were nowhere near the class boundary. So we didn't train on difficult enough examples. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> that is true. So, so out of so the data set, the distribution was slightly different, and <laughs> the training set and test set were slightly different. <laughs> cool. All right, but that's the whole point. I wanted us as a community to go through this exercise because now we have a framework, you know, of how to study, how to take the exam, how to take notes, how to share that with others, and how you know we can replicate this. We can do this for another one. We can do this for another cloud provider. We can do this for another space like this. You know. I wanted us to go through this. And everyone watching us on YouTube, hope you enjoyed this. Um, cool. Then in the end, you get an email. Congratulations, you passed. Actually, you get passed immediately after you, you submit. And you also get an email. Uh, I got a bunch of emails from certification before the exam. I did not read any of them. They were like how to prepare, what to do, what not to do. I did not read any of them. I was too, I wanted to avoid information you know overwhelming like i don't want to know i know what to expect so yeah a lot of emails and then yeah you get a badge uh, you can you have to claim it actually you get a badge and you can share it with your I don't know, linkedin page and so forth or with others on your website um what else do you get um you get engaged with a certified aws certified community okay you can actually apply to become what is called a subject matter expert. I applied for it just for fun. Uh, this is a, a program that you can either help AWS develop questions or um, test questions, uh, for example. Um, 
unlock access to exclusive merchandise. Fine, who cares about that? Uh, what we care about though is this thing called uh, a voucher for the next exam. And that's what I wanna talk about. That's literally my next uh, slide. So this is where we got confused because after five days, we didn't get a breakdown of our performance. And I remember that you get a discount for either referring a friend or for your next exam, something like that. I know in GCP, when you pass an exam, you can recertify for half the price. Um, but here you get a 50% on your next, which means any of them or even the same one. So let me go to, uh, yeah. So benefits, certification slash benefits, you get exam discount, which is what I care for and a badge, sure. A badge is also what I care for, but let's look at this. And where do you find this? So let me, I have a certification account. You need your account here, which is different than your AWS account. This is your Amazon uh, Amazon account. There was a link at the bottom of the email too that you could click on. It said access your benefits. That was a screenshot, yeah. 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 Okay, so this is where we were and we're like, okay, where is, this is where you're also registered by the way for an exam. Uh, let me see if I can do this real quick just for you to get an idea. So. Schedule PSI or Pearson. I did PSI. What did you do, Robert? Uh, PSI or Pearson? Uh, Pearson. Remember, okay. we thought that uh, PSI was going to uh, induce too much pressure since it's a <laughs> unit of measurement of pressure pounds per square inch. So we decided to avoid the pressure by taking Pearson. Yeah, or, <laughs> or too little pressure. Either way. I went with that. I went with a <laughs> too little pressure approach. <laughs> So, uh, schedule. Uh, remote. Continue. I also did person. Yeah. Is this what I, I don't remember, guys. What did I do? Select yeah, your language. Pearson. Yeah, this looks different. I think I did Pearson too. I'm pretty sure you did because you told us that's what you did. All right. My bad. Switching gears. That was uncharted territory. I didn't know <laughs> what to do. Yeah, yeah, I did Pearson too. <laughs> uh, online. Oh yeah, this this is the only thing that you get warned about: your computer, your testing space, your ID. Yeah, short video, not helpful. Those links are actually pretty descriptive, though. If you go okay. back to the. Oh, yeah. Where they're talking about the ID requirements and the testing space. They go into a good amount of detail. Sorry, then, okay, let me go back. About exactly what types of IDs are permissible, et cetera. Right. Okay. Um, what language you want to take it in? There's a bunch uh, of them listed here, but I think I was only given the choice of English or Japanese eventually. Yeah, me yeah, too. in the end, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's other exams that are provided in other languages. There's a lot of uh, check boxes that I read. Unfortunately, I should have spent more time reading them. <laughs> uh, photo IDs. You don't want to read this five minutes before you take the exam. Who in the world is going to read this, right? I mean, the amount of stress is already high. <laughs> Just keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. What language you're oh the proctor to speak, not take the exam, the proctor to speak. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Anybody want to do an exam on the fly here? But I don't know if the proctor is gonna like our <laughs> the learning adventure community <laughs> joining us. <laughs> uh today is the 15th. So yeah, there's nothing for today. Sorry, friends. Tomorrow. Um let's do the time zone that we prefer displayed in 24 hours. Oh, there's only in one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Let's do one on the 17th. All right, so you see it's, what is this? Every ah, 15, 45 minutes, I don't know, it depends. Yeah, you have, you have options. All right, so let's say you wanna do it at 12.30. I think this will ask you to pay, right? Yeah, okay, let's not do that. Um, let's go back to my training. 
so that's how you register, right? Uh, the other thing is if you go in exam history, you'll see your report. Um, sorry, um, I'm sharing just my computer. Oh, can you see it? Mm -hmm, I think so. Right. Yeah. So pass, fail, pass, and you just get uh, meet competencies. You don't get uh, actual score. Um, it's nothing proprietary here, so I don't mind sharing this. Um, okay, fine. You just get this, what actual questions you're asked, but that's fine. We knew that tech will have most. All yeah, right. Ian, there, Ian, there is a... There is a did you get a raw score at the top? I think you didn't, right? Just to pass. Oh, yeah, you got it. It's oh, 832. Oh, oh it there is. it is. Okay, I didn't pay attention. Okay. Check it out and let me know what you got. Yeah. Uh, all right. Good to know. Uh, sorry, Elena, what are you saying? And I just answered. I said yes, that you get a score out of 1,000 at the top. Oh, you're doing the, during the exam? No, just yeah, right yeah. now. When we were, uh, when just right now. Oh. Yeah, just right now. Good Still job, George. I just found this yesterday. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'll have to, I'll have to look, search for mine. And then, if you go to, uh, yeah, that's what you get. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, that's that's most of it. Um, anything else? Robert, Elena. No, not about that. I, yeah, I was kind of hoping to get a breakdown of what I actually missed and why, you know, that kind of thing. Didn't get it. Um, but I was, I was really glad that the pass, like it tells you immediately that you passed. And I was just like, oh, I failed that. And then I was like, whoa, okay, no. So that was nice that they don't make you wait at all for after you like complete it. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Cool. Um, let me go back to our meetup page. All right, so switching gears a little bit. Um, we're gonna take a break in terms of sessions here. Uh, anything else about the exam or should I, can I switch gears, Robert, Alana? No, unless there are questions about it yeah yeah let's do that sorry yeah you're right before i switch gears any more questions if you want to ask now's a good time before i talk about upcoming events <laughs> yep labs um i mean i use aws at work so i have lab experience did you do any lab work uh, robert elena did you do any quick labs or anything like that no, I no, I just like did what I have to do during the day occasionally, which is like show people how to spin up an instance. You know, nothing, nothing major. Yeah, the certification is valid for three years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, David, any questions from you? No, I think you guys answered all my questions. Thank you. Awesome. All right, then going back to our calendar here. Um, we're gonna take a break here for Christmas, New Year's uh, for the next two weeks. And uh, we're gonna resume our sessions on January 5th. Um, Robert and I are also doing a uh, presenting uh, session with the other uh, sister community of San Diego Meetup on the Jerome Sariel's machine learning book on around here, right, uh, Robert, 15, 22nd, 29. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll post across, we'll cross post the event here as well, but that's on uh, January. We don't wanna lose momentum though. So we'll definitely have an event here. We're just trying to figure out what kind of event to have. Um, as we mentioned, our next certification is the machine learning one. So stay tuned for that. Um, so we'll break it up. We'll break it into two sessions, like we did here. What resources we use to prepare for the machine learning specialty exam, as well as the exam experience itself, uh, like we did today. 
some other events. Uh, TensorFlow had this ML community that I, I would like to review. Uh, um, maybe we can do a quick session on it, I'm not sure. Um, as well as AWS has this uh, hackathon, AWS Disaster Response Hackathon. Um, um, that's going on until Feb. Uh, it would be nice to at least familiarize ourselves with the data set, what challenges, and um, what does it take to participate in such a hackathon? They, uh, they're promoting this new service that AWS just released a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago called uh, Studio Lab. Uh, so Studio Lab is basically, think of it as an entry level or, or user-friendly interface to SageMaker. Uh, so you can do your machine learning here. I don't think you use this any code. Again, it's a brand new service. So I'm still trying to, we're still trying to familiarize ourselves. But then once you want to deploy it into production, you actually, you can move your, your solution, however you implemented this into SageMaker. So I think it kind of uses like pre-built models and pre-built um, approaches. And if you really want to, if you want to roll them into production, that's why you use SageMaker. And SageMaker is we can build, as you'll see in the next exam, is basically the AWS version of a Jupyter Notebook, but with access to their entire infrastructure, CPUs, GPUs, edge devices, and so forth. Cool. Um, so yeah, this machine learning is the next one we're covering. Um, Say so something about two years of hands-on experiencing using running ML or deep learning uh, models, um, intuition behind them, High parameter optimization, deep learning frameworks, deployment, operational best practices. Very similar framework as the previous one, right? Exam guides, sample questions, and so forth. Yeah, question, multiple choice, same one of four or two of five. And I think you also get right. another 15 uh, test uh, questions that don't count. Probably, yeah. The price is a bit higher. That's why we need that discount. So, yeah, uh, recommend you take the practitioner one just to get a half off from the next one. Um, hmm, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it. Um, oh yeah, lots of services, AI services that AWS has for, I think they'll be asked um, in the exam. I don't know. We'll see, right, when we get here. Cool. Um, that's what we have, friends. Um, Anything else you want to talk about, Robert? David, Alana? Nope. Cool. Uh, any more questions in the chat? Nope. Cool. Awesome. All right, friends, if you're watching this online, thanks for joining us and thanks everyone for joining us in virtually here. Um, this, was, this was a fun experience. Uh, we learned a lot. So yeah, now we know what to expect for the next one. <laughs> Clean desk and uh, <laughs> proctoring experience. Uh, yeah, this should be fun. Uh, stay tuned for what's coming up in January. Um, yeah, Robert and I are thinking of doing something in addition to the book or related to the book, uh, the chapters that we're covering. So. Yeah, uh, happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, um, and happy new year, and Merry Christmas. Yep, and we'll see you next year. Yeah, I'll stop recording here, and everyone watching us online, happy holidays, and see you, see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>